Hello everyone, my name is Cameron. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are doing the NXT TakeOver War Games 2021 predictions. Uh, I kind of don't have my tripod right now because it's in my closet and I forgot to grab it out before I shut my closet. I didn't really want to get up to grab it right now. Uh, but we're gonna start with uh, the women's NX or the women's war games match. We have Cora Jade, Io Shirai, Raquel Gonzalez, and Kaylee Ray versus Toxic Attraction, that being JC Jane, Gigi Dolan, Mandy Rose, and Dakota Kai. Uh, we have both predicted Team Dakota slash Team Toxic Attraction, whichever team name you want to call it. Uh, it seems like NXT's been calling it Team Toxic, but I feel like Team Dakota makes more sense as Team Raquel versus Team Toxic just doesn't make as much sense as Team Toxic or Team Dakota versus Team Raquel. I mean, I, I know Mandy took the title from Raquel, but still, it makes more sense because the main feud going into this is kind of EO, Cora, and Kaylee versus Toxic Attraction, Raquel versus Dakota. It's the same way the men's breaks down, but we'll get to that when we get to the men's match. Next, we have the men's hair versus hair match. We have Duke Hudson versus Cameron Grimes. We have both gone for Cameron Grimes to win this because, one, Grimes would look pretty fucking weird with no hair, and two, um, come on, it's Cameron Grimes. They're not going to change the way he looks. I mean, like, even the small cut they already gave him is a bit of a shock. I mean, he looks amazing. Don't be me wrong. He looks great with it, but come on. It makes more sense for Hudson to be the one who gets shaved. Next, we have the NXT Tag Team Championship match. We have Imperium versus Kyle O'Reilly and Von Wagner. Uh, we've actually surprisingly both gone for O'Reilly and Wagner because we think that's probably more likely of what's going to happen. Um... Even though Imperium just got the titles and they definitely deserve it more because they're the actual tag team and honestly they both are great superstars in the ring. I, I feel like they're going to end up giving it to O'Reilly and Wagner in the hopes of keeping O'Reilly in the company. Uh, if you guys don't know, O'Reilly's contract I think is up after this maybe uh, or at the end of this month. It's very close to being up. Um, and a lot of people have speculated that he's not going to resign and he's going to go sign with AEW uh, to basically reform the Undisputed Era with Adam Cole and Bobby Fish as they have been recently tagging together on AEW television. Um, either way, I don't know. I, I can't really say much on it. Uh, if he leaves, it's going to suck. But uh, if he does, then you know it, it, whatever he does to be happy in his career, I think, is the best, the best solution. And if that means going to AEW, then so be it. All right, and uh, next we have the NXT Cruiserweight Championship match. We have Roderick Strong versus Joe Gacy, who's not even a cruiserweight, um, which is very interesting. This this feud is fantastic. I love everything about this. Uh, we've both gone for Roderick Strong. I don't think they're going to take the cruiserweight title off somebody and put it onto somebody who's not a cruiserweight unless they're trying to kill the title. But I don't think I – ho I hope they wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be surprised. It is WWE. They've done it before. But uh, I, I really hope they don't because I do love the Cruiserweight division. Um, and yeah. And finally, we have the men's NXT, or the men's War Games match. Why do I keep saying NXT? God. The men's War Games match, we have Team Black and Gold versus Team 2.0. Uh, Team Black and Gold consisting of Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunne, and Ellie Knight facing off against Team 2.0, which consists of Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, Tony D'Angelo, and Grayson Waller. We've both gone for Team Black and Gold. Um, the biggest speculation going into this, especially with the fact that Johnny lost the advantage match to Braun Breaker this past Wednesday or this past Tuesday on NXT, is that this is Johnny's last match in the company. If you guys don't know, basically the same thing Adam Cole did uh, back when him and O'Reilly were finishing up their feud, where he kind of signed like a week long deal just to taken or a few weeks long deal to take him through to the end of the um feud johnny did the same thing he signed a one week long deal um basically his his uh contract ended a few weeks ago he signed a deal long enough to get him to war games uh, i think his his ended at the end of november and then he signed like a week long deal to get him to the end of war games to to basically the weekend of war games so he could finish this match and and finish this feud a lot of people are speculating that he is going to be coming out to the Rebel Heart song, um, which has been his most well-known theme song at the time he's been in NXT. Um, when he won the NXT Championship, the North American Championship multiple times, when him and Tommaso were first first started their feud, that was the song that was playing. It is the song most well-known with Johnny. Even more, I would say, than Chrome Hearts, which was the DIY theme. 
Um, and a lot of people think for his final send off, he'll have one final beat and play rebel heart one more time before he leaves. Um, I personally, I would love to see that, but also I wouldn't mind it if Chrome hearts played and Tommaso and Johnny put aside their differences for the night and came out in full DIY get up, you know, did the full set of poses and everything and, and, and came out completely like they, they were back in the day. And because if it's going to be Johnny's last match, not only does he deserve to go out on a big win, he also deserves to be doing it in the best way possible for him and in the way he's going to feel, feel the most fulfilled and fulfill the fans the best. And if this is potentially the last night we see Johnny Gargano and one of the last matches we see Kyle O'Reilly in, in NXT, I have to say thank you to both of them. Even though I think a lot of fans turned on Johnny the past couple months and the past like year, um, because, you know, people were just, they were getting fed up with him for whatever reason. It seems like now with his feud with Carmelo, it is kind of like, you know, mellowing back out and he's actually starting to be liked by the fans a lot more. But even if this is his last, I think he did everything he possibly could in NXT. He's been there five years and if he really doesn't want to go to the main roster, his best bet is leaving. And, uh. It's hard to see that because, I mean, like, it's it's Johnny Gargano. You thought he'd be there forever, you know? He's Johnny TakeOver. He's Johnny NXT at this point, and it's weird to think of him being gone, but if he really does leave, I hope to see him do some very, very good things in the future. Um, also, I feel like he might not. I, I feel like he could resign because it just makes the most sense, I feel like. Him and Candice are about to have a kid. I don't think he'd really want to change where he's working right now because it might affect the way his life, his livelihood's going to be, you know? So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll figure this out. Hopefully we'll see soon where he decides to go. For those of you wondering, by the way, Pete Dunn did resign already. He resigned back in October, I believe, or September, somewhere around there. But again, like I said, with the women's War Games match, this does also have the feud breakdown. Um, obviously, Tommaso and Braun... Johnny and Carmelo, Pete and Tony, and then LA Knight and Grayson Waller are all in their own singular feud. So instead of it being kind of like multiple tag teams, it, it, it's in a different way, and I like it. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys' predictions are down in the comments below. I'll see you all in the next video. Stay old. Peace.